In this unit, we are going to learn about one of the most basic human cognitive process called memory. John is studying for a test which he has to answer tomorrow. To pass the test, John has to read the information. Convert the information so that the brain understands the text. Once the brain receives the information, the brain has to store the information so that the next day John can answer his exam. Now John is all set to answer his exam the next day. The toughest part of any exam is to remember what has been studied. John is all ready to answer the exam. He goes to school and John gets his question paper. The first question on the paper is name the capital of India. And guess what happens to John? He cannot remember the capital of India. So what's wrong with John? He has failed to remember the answer. Since John cannot remember the answer, we say that forgetting has occurred. Thus, we can refer memory to encoding, storage and retrieval. What we saw in John's case is that encoding happened. Storage did take place but John could not remember. That is, there was a retrieval failure. Memory can be broadly classified into explicit memory and implicit memory. Explicit memory is memory of facts and events and refers to those memories that can be consciously recalled. Explicit memory can be further subdivided into somatic memory and episodic memory. Let us understand what is somatic memory and episodic memory. Let us ask some more questions to John. John, what is the color of the sky? John answers, the color of the sky is blue. Okay, John, what is an apple? John answers, an apple is a fruit. How could John answer these questions? When John answered these questions, he searched his somatic memory for the answers. So what does semantic memory really mean? Semantic memory refers to the general world knowledge that we have accumulated throughout our lives. When the question was asked to John, he could answer them because in his semantic memory, he had a collection of facts, ideas, meaning and concepts. Now let us ask a few more questions to John to understand the episodic memory. John, what did you have for breakfast? John says, I had bread and jam for breakfast. John, what did you do during your last summer vacation? John says, I visited Kashmir during my last summer vacation. To answer these questions, 
John searched his episodic memory. So what does episodic memory really mean? Episodic memory refers to the experiences and specific events that occur in one's life. When the questions were asked to John, he could answer them because in his episodic memory, he could recreate these events in his memory at any given point of time. Like the trip to Kashmir, having breakfast, an accident he may have witnessed, first day at school. These are some of the examples of an episodic memory. So, the difference between semantic memory and an episodic memory is, semantic memory deals with ideas, facts and concepts. An episodic memory deals with life events that we have experienced. In semantic memory, time of memory formation is not relevant. In an episodic memory, time is an important factor. Now, let us understand implicit memory. John is going to school, so he has to button his shirt and tie his shoelace. Both these activities, that is, buttoning his shirt and tying his shoelace, he does without trying to remember how to do them. Another example of implicit memory is riding a bike. So we can define implicit memory as a type of memory in which previous experience aid to performance of a task without conscious awareness of these previous experience. A subtype of implicit memory is called as procedural memory. Procedural memory is memory for muscle action. Application areas is educational setup to improve student performance. Students can be trained to improve to recall the learned information and performance.